Hey guys, well thank you for checking out this counterfeit vlog this week. This week I want to just take a few minutes to talk about something that was pretty powerful last week when Mario, were, Mario and I were at home just behind here, sitting at home, kicking back, feet up and relaxing watching this, this movie called The Wave. And I'm sure, I'm sure you've had moments in life where you've watched something on TV or watched a film or read a book or something and it's just moved you in a, in a deep place and you're not initially quite sure why. Well in this film, let me just quickly give you a bit of a background about the film. It's set in Norway, set in this beautiful fjord, mountain, kind of nestled village type setting. And it's called The Wave because about 80 years ago, there was an actual moment in history where on this fjord, the mountains surrounding, basically part of them collapsed, causing an avalanche, fell into the fjord. And the net result of that was this huge, devastating tsunami that, that came along the length of the fjord and wiped out the village at the far end and so this film is really just kind of revolving around this destruction um, and impending doom again as a, a whole bunch of characters um, in the film but the central character is a geologist whose responsibility is to check out the readings in the mountains just to make sure that everything's stable and settled and that everybody in the vicinity is safe and so for the whole really for half of the film it's building up to this tension eventually there's another moment in history but there's one scene in particular in the film that really moved me and I wanted just to leave this with you this week. Is that because the central character, this geologist, he knew that something wasn't right, his instinct was telling him that something was up with the mountains. And he had this sense in him, an intuition, um, an instinct, um, a reflex response, call it what you want, he knew something wasn't right and yet he delayed in, in sounding and raising the alarm and eventually that's what happens. He susses out there's a problem, there's going to be another avalanche and really the, the alarm was raised and this was the scene in the film that really touched me and it's a, a word that I want to leave with you today. Whether you're watching this as a believer or maybe you're watching this as, a, as an unbeliever, it's that if you imagine the scene, so it's in the middle of the night and this beautiful completely still fjord with waters lapping gently on the sand and all these homes surrounding in the village completely dark, everyone's asleep in bed and then the camera pans in on this alarm, on this siren because the alarm's been raised, the avalanche has happened and the tsunami has started to come towards the village and there's 10 minutes on the clock counting down before everything is destroyed, people are drowned and killed and so the camera pans in on this siren and in the middle of the dead of night this siren goes out piercing kind of shrilly type noise breaking cutting through the dead of night and then you see slowly as you see the camera pan to the homes and the hotels and all the different houses all the buildings just slowly lights begin just to come on as people have been roused out of their sleep by this alarm, by this siren. Margot? Yeah? Slow alarm. Come on. Go to And you're thinking, well, what's so moving about that? Well, let me tell you what's so moving about that. Counterfeit vlog exists because, well, several reasons, but one of the main reasons is because we feel passionate that now is the time in history to proclaim truth, to lift our voices and to communicate what is true in culture, 
So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in culture which isn't true, it's not right. And I think a lot of you watching this, even if you would say you're not a believer, a lot of you will recognise that. But it's also to provoke a sense of wholeheartedness of faith in following Jesus Christ. You know, at the core of the Christian gospel, some of, some of you will have heard of it, some of you won't, at the core of the Christian gospel isn't just that Jesus, as a really undisputed figure in history, if you go and check out the Bible, check out the historicity, check out the original manuscripts of the Bible, compared to other holy books, or other even historical figures throughout the ages, you'll realise that the Bible is solid and that the, the account of Jesus living and then dying on a cross for you and for me is something that is completely solid. But, but this is it. At the centre of the Christian gospel isn't just that Jesus came and that he died and that he rose again. It's that he's coming again. That Jesus is coming again. Maybe no one's ever said that to you before. Maybe that's the first time you've heard that. And check it out. Even, even Muslims believe that Jesus is coming back except just as, as a prophet, one of many, and therefore not the Son of God. And so, I want to tell you today, I'm here to tell you today that Jesus, as crazy as that sounds, and as crazy as the thought may seem to your mind, Jesus is very much real, he's very much alive, he's very much risen from the dead, and he is very much coming again. And this is really what the whole of history, all of the ages, are winding up to progressively. And you might have wondered why the state of the world is in such a mess, isn't it? Everybody can see that as clear as day. And it's a very fragile situation. And if you maybe have found yourself wondering what is going on, maybe when your head hits the pillow at night or if you have conversations with your nearest and dearest, what is going on in the world? Well, I'm here to tell, today, today to tell you that Jesus is the only answer. Jesus is the only one who will make sense of your life. He is the only one who can make sense of your history, of your present, and of your future. He's coming again. He is to be trusted. He is to be loved. He's to be feared. And in that film, that scene where the whole of that Norwegian um, community was sleeping and then the alarm goes out, there is a need for us to wake up. Whether, whether we're believers, whether we're unbelievers, whether we are curious explorers, and whether we've got questions, whether we've got doubts, whether we've been shown the way in Sunday school as a kid, whatever our situation is, whether right here, right now, listening to this, the question, the only question that matters is, what are you doing with Jesus? And so I'm here today, again, just to say, please, will you consider Jesus? Please, would you maybe pick that Bible up that's in your house somewhere? Maybe go online and check out something to do with the Bible to find one of the Gospels like Mark, one of the, sh the shortest one that will take you probably an hour to read. And so if, if you've maybe never considered Jesus, maybe you felt yourself leaning towards um, an opening of your heart towards things of faith, towards things of the Bible. Have you ever thought, last time you thought about the sun in the sky or the moon and the stars at night, most of the time we just, our thinking is, is below the level of a ceiling, let alone the kind of the atmosphere and the fact that we are just so tiny hung in the middle of space on this tiny bit of rock and we're just doing life through the ages and it's ludicrous to think that there isn't a higher being that there isn't a higher power that there isn't a loving creating God and so if it's okay I'm just going to pray for us now Father God I want to thank you for this moment thank you for technology, I thank you for this opportunity to consider you, to think about you and my prayer is that you would take these words and by your spirit make them to be um, of sense to whoever's listening and my prayer is that you would open the eyes of the heart of everybody listening whether they're sleepy at a level of faith where they've grown cold and where they've walked away or where they've compromised or whether they've cowed to fear and and to pressures from other places, Lord. And my prayer is that you would open the eyes of other people listening who have never come to a place of accepting you as their saviour, of getting on their knees and confessing their sinfulness and their need for you. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would awaken our hearts, that our hearts would be awake, that they'd be alert, alert to the things of truth, 
alert to the things that are not true and that we would come to know and love you for who you are. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that you would cause your people to awake from sleep and that you would shine on them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And guys, thank you so much for watching this vlog. And if you've prayed with me today, as I hope you have, please do get in touch. There's a, there's a link here to a film that we made a couple of years ago called Jesus Come. And it's about Jesus' return and some other stuff linked to that that might be a help um, and of some interest to you, particularly if you've got nobody to, to talk to immediately. But please do. I mean, you'll likely have questions. You'll likely have disagreements, you'll likely have concerns, but probably some of you will have felt, as I've talked, just a sense of excitement and hope. And uh, I would just love to hear from you, so would Joshua, and I pray that you'd get in touch, say hi, and let us know what you're thinking. Thanks for watching.